All right, you beautiful humans, welcome back to the channel. And today we are gonna be running through iPad OS 15. This is the developer beta version. You actually have to be a part of that program. You pay a $99 uh, subscription annual fee for that. So this is not a public beta. I'm gonna be running through answering your questions that you've already posed to me um, when I pretty much did a shout out that I'm, I am gonna be working with iPad OS 15, working through that beta. And you've asked about the RAM utilization, uh, the speed of the Thunderbolt uh, 3 port here. Did anything change? I'm going to run through this with you. I haven't even done anything really with this beta version at all. I wanted to bring you along behind the scenes on this. I will say for those of you that were expecting M1X uh, to be announced, the MacBook Pros updated. That's unfortunate. I know that I said in my comment section here that people were waiting for the M1X or should they just go ahead and get the M1? I said no announcement at WWDC. However, I, in my videos, I did follow up and say that I hope that I am wrong. I really did want to be wrong on that. Um, but here we are. We're still with M1, very capable devices, and we are working with the iPad Pro here, the one terabyte, 16 gigs of RAM version if you are new here. So let's actually run through a couple of scenarios. All right, so just really quickly for those that need the uh, questions answered as far as uh, the external display, I'm connected USB-C to DisplayPort here and uh, I still have the black bars. However, this is app dependent. So if we open up LumaFusion, we'll open up LumaFusion and give me that option here and I get this full screen here. And this is again, USB-C to DisplayPort, a 27 inch monitor, it's a 1080p monitor but I'm getting that full display. So developers, please take advantage of this. I also did hear that I think um, a shift screen, I believe is working on a beta or they have a beta that I don't have access to. I think I'm gonna reach out to them though, just to see if I can test it um, because it gives you more options as far as that full display. So I, I, I really, I don't know much about it, but that's just something to consider. And developers, I'm gonna be going through a lot of the developer um, uh, videos and some of the tutorials just to see what Apple is doing here and allowing developers to really do. So let's go ahead and go into the memory. So the RAM. Now consider that I'm running a screen recorder. I've got about 8,700. So I have nothing else open but this. And I don't really have anything like less than a gig wired to some of the apps or really just the software itself. I've got swap memory, so if I need that, I can certainly have access to it, but I just wanted to show this to you. Now, let's go ahead and go back into LumaFusion. All right. And so I actually, I, I lose that ability to um, do that, that display, at least from this particular setup here. All right, and so you'll see, I have these options here at the top, like if I wanted to move this more over here this way, I can still resize it. It's kind of an interesting functionality. I don't really know what I think about it. Um, and then that can actually be floating and then go back to this. Now we'll, we'll open up some more apps here, but let's actually look at this, this Ram. And I do see that right out of the gates, I think from my previous video that it looks like as far as the free Ram is concerned, Again, we still have swap. We still have that availability to grab RAM as we need to. Um, and for those of you that did not see my other video, so this is Sony FX6 uh, and FX9 footage from uh, Klaus Anderson and Philip Bloom. And so I have graded this footage. So I do have some color presets on here and I do should have some LUTs on here. Yeah, I have this, uh, this filmic LUT here. So just to kind of show you, I am still scrubbing through, no issues. Let's just kind of play here a little bit. And remember, I know, like I said last time, when it comes to iPad OS, the fact that an app is really only given five gigs to kind of play with here. Um, and, and I can kind of understand that because from the standpoint of the iPad Pro, having the M1, even the other iPad Pros previous to this, even the iPad Air Gen 4, very capable 
of managing a lot of, of this footage. But the issue is, is that you have all of these other iPads out there that I would not necessarily try to throw this into a timeline in, a, in just a, a, a regular iPad. Um, but I don't have one. Well, actually, I do have a couple that I could test um, from, from my kids. So I may actually do that as part of a test. But what I just wanted to show you is that as far as the RAM is concerned, that seems pretty stable. Let's go to this section here where we have that grid that's coming up. So I've got four pieces of content here. So upper left, bottom right is already slowed down. And then bottom left, uh, top right are just not slowed down at all. And it looks like if I just keep going here, it, it wants that RAM. And that's the thing, like as far as the questions about what is happening here, the CPU, I don't have access to any GPU information here, but as far as the CPU be, being like utilized less than 20% here based on this graph, and this is just kind of a repeat, I'm just wanting to see if I continue to play this, like what this is really gonna look like here. So wired, definitely for the software, I'm utilizing more RAM, but not a ton. And I still, as far as active is concerned, if, if these apps were killed or, or we didn't you know, need them anymore, then I could get some of that RAM back. Let me go ahead and let me get this out of here because I'm gonna try to export this. And then what we'll also do is I'll run through opening several other apps just to see what happens to the RAM and uh, just to see if I can still play this back and how that all works. But let's actually time this export. All right, it was two minutes and 46 seconds, the last one on this render. Uh, and I don't think I've added, I did add a couple of transitions since the last video, but nothing too intense here. So let's go ahead. We are going to export this into our files, our local. And this is, as you'll see, 4K Ultra, 150 megabits per second, um, HEVC uh, 265 here. All right, so we'll take a look at the RAM here. And this, again, is a five minute timeline, has cinema camera footage that also had that grid with the four pieces of footage in there. I have got um, audio in there, a little bit of sound design uh, as well, just kind of added to it. And we're, we're cranking, so it looks we're looking good. As far as the free RAM, it is dropping like it did last time, but I don't see that it is actually dropping any more than it had uh, previously. But you'll notice that the wired is going up closer to hovering just under two gigs, um, active and inactive. And again, this RAM can be cached to the SSD if we need that RAM. Um, and of course the M1 is just, I think, brilliant as far as that swap memory is concerned. I've said it before, swap has been available prior to um, the, the M1, it's just how it handles it a little bit differently. So why don't we go ahead and just kind of fast forward and we will get you toward uh, the end, but we're pretty close here. All right, 253 here, 253. And I would say I got 246 last time. I don't, I added a couple of extra transitions in this. So really 253, I think we're on par here. And as you'll see, once that actually um, comes up, so we'll just put that in files, save it. And so the RAM starting to come back 8,500 on that. So let's go ahead and open up a bunch of, of apps. So let me just get out of here. All right, let's take a look here and see, like we've challenged this a little bit, opened up a few programs, LumaFusion Status, Asphalt 9 is open, Call of Duty open, YouTube, 3D Mark, Wildlife Extreme, the benchmarking app, Lightroom, Photoshop, and Twitter. Hit me up on Twitter, I love Twitter. All right. So about five gigs free and wired about a gig, but we still have that active and inactive. Remember, if it needs the RAM, it will cache it to the SSD and it will, it will take it if it needs it. And we do have available RAM inactive. So if, if we needed it now, when we kind of start things up, 
looks like we are now hovering at around 4,500 when we are kind of playing this back. Still scrubbing through the timeline here. Hold on. Still looks pretty smooth. Dropping below four gigs here on the free. Wired's going up a little bit. Let's see how this grid does. Cause again, this is four, these are four clips. And some of that likely is going to be cached into uh, the app itself, into the program. But as you'll see, playing and hovering around still four gigs. As far as the CPU, whoops. Let's go to CPU still under about 20% with a couple spikes there. And again, still hovering around that free at around four gigs. Now that doesn't mean if you have an eight gig model of the iPad Pro, it doesn't mean that all of a sudden you've run, run out of RAM because look, with the active and inactive, if we need it, it will swap it. So wired is only 1.2. All right, so let's actually benchmark uh, the Thunderbolt three port. Remember on my last video, we were transferring uh, from this Thunderbolt enclosure um, with a Western Digital, so an SN750. And we were getting somewhere in the neighborhood of five to um, 550 as far as writing to the internal SSD. We have this in File Explorer Pro. So we'll go ahead and do that same file. And over on the right here, I have my Geekbench 5 opened up because remember in all of my testing, when you uh, add more tasks, when you kind of slam that, that chip, and ask it to do more, it tends to increase in that performance. So let's move it, or rather let's, let's copy this to my files. You'll see it's not in there and save. Whoa. Okay. So you're seeing this as I'm seeing this for the first time. I'm not running a benchmark right now. I've said through and through that the hardware, so the controller, so, uh, the controller on the chip and the retimer from Intel, the communication protocol, there was something going on there because on the M1s, I have tested that over and over again. And what I will say is that um, when I slammed the M1, like with tasks and a hub and doing multiple things, I was getting better performance. But as far as all of the Big Sur updates, we haven't seen really any uh, increase in the performance. And we are literally almost twice as far as the transfer, the write speed within File Explorer, Explorer Pro. Fascinating. So let me actually just run this benchmark to see we're we're still going up at like 950. We're just under 959. But let me just run this benchmark and see if that changes anything like significantly. Let's see if like we just get a massive bump. Because again, when we're taxing the processor, the CPU hits that controller, we've got more happening, we're getting better throughput, but I'm not really seeing a massive gain like I did like we we got almost like a jump of a hundred on that right to those files or to the internal SSD when we did this but it's I mean it's still going up even if I stop so let me actually just stop this benchmark so we're canceling that so we're not asking it to do anything else and it just finished all right so let's actually do a this one is a 700 gig folder. Let's do this one. We're going to copy that one to the internal. All right, let's see what happens. Starts out as it normally would. The enclosure doesn't feel, it just feels slightly warm to the touch, but we're still going up here. So let me wait for this to kind of settle out to see how far up it's going to go as far as the transfer. So let me just kind of get you to that point because this is a large folder. So let's actually kind of get you to where I think it's it's hovering and it's maxing out. Okay, so it seems like we're hovering around 948, give or take. The enclosure itself, 96.4 uh, Fahrenheit, 35.8 Celsius here. 
and let's run a benchmark. Let's see if we can actually bump it up even more. Okay. So we'll tax the system a little bit more, see if that does anything. And right out of the gates before, before this update or before iPad OS 15, we were getting like, it was kind of jumping quite significantly. Like it would jump up about a hundred or so, not immediately, but it would, it would definitely get there. So it seems like taxing uh, the chip, the controller doesn't really need to happen. Although we're still not at that um, performance that we probably should be for Thunderbolt three. However, here's the thing. I'm going to, I'm going to cancel that, that benchmark. Here's the thing, folks. All I can say is this is all preliminary. I'm working with uh, the beta version here, the developer beta version. So this is not public beta. I still have to test, but this is what I'm finding so far. It's really encouraging, especially because with uh, Big Sur update after update, them not really addressing or admitting something going on with these controllers. So I think I'm gonna leave it here. I'm just gonna ask you to go do those things that matter. Keep rocking those faces and I'm gonna keep testing here. So I'll catch you right back here on the next one.